Our, our new our new strains for that well we have of course the really exciting triploids everybody's been anticipating those so every day we're having I think just a few hundred seed packs that are available yeah. because it's so new you know we made a lot and did a bunch of uh, research and development last summer in yeah. California and now we're producing more as we speak so yeah. we're sort of just releasing the ones that we read that we trialed perfect and then in the same way uh which are your three strains of the moment that you say i'm like if i tell you your three tops it's a tough question but orange cream pop yeah. i know um the guzzlers ben is really excited about too i love the granny candy um but really i love the cream pop the orange cream yeah. pop the most because it's really just like <laughs> naranja y leche like Vanilla, you know. Como se dice vanilla? Vanilla. The same. Vanilla. Okay. The same. The same. The same. Nice. We say it exactly the same. So it's you'll smell pure naranja y vanilla. Super bien. Very nice. Okay. Um, Hi. Hello. So Hi. we just researched the triploids for the first time. Did a bunch of trials last summer, and. I mean, the most concrete thing was we saw more yield in resin, like in hash for ice water hash, rosin. Um, you know, there are so many different crops that have triploid versions, like probably a third of what you find in the grocery store has been made into triploid and we've seen a lot of advantages. So, I mean, the chances that cannabis, there are advantages to, ha to triploid, we've already shown and, and just, uh, what's the word? We've already displayed some of them, yeah. But, you know, like, I think it's still yet to be seen, like, if it's going to be the next thing, but I think there's a good chance it'll be really... I mean, you know, there was, there were several different moments that were really exciting for us. I think making it, making it the... Uh, decision that we were notably seeing increased vigor was a big step for us and that was something that we wanted to ensure before ever dropping them. We also were seeing increased trichome production and not only that but very uniquely mutated trichomes, some with much larger heads than others and some with triple heads and double heads and so if you're thinking about somebody that's you know looking for fresh frozen or to do any kind of rosin production you'd think if it has triple the heads on the trichomes <laughs> you know what <laughs> that's what does that mean for yields and yeah. so you know that's going to be the next phase of what we're really looking into yeah. it's still really new for us too but we finally felt like it got to the place where we were ready to share it with the yeah, world like we, we did a whole summer of trials yeah, yeah. and like we always want to approach this stuff with the utmost caution because it's our favorite plant on the planet. Not that there's any like danger with making triploids. I think people don't realize how many things we have every day. Bananas, grapes, yeah. you know, our triploid. And so yeah. it's been happening for like close to 100 years. We've been breeding this way as humans and it's not like a GMO thing or anything like that. It's uh, it's definitely high, high tech though. It's yeah. tech, technology applied to cannabis. Yeah. And um, so like Hallie said, there were some real like encouraging discoveries over the summer yeah. of trials for them. And we feel good about what we're releasing today. Yeah, and it's brand new. Sure yeah, it's brand new. I, I, I think, you know, we won't always be like just triplet triplet necessarily. We'll yeah. see, maybe yeah. we will, but, but maybe we, probably won't I think personally there's definitely but. not going to be a time where all you can get from us is triploids <laughs> and, and you know another thing that I will take the opportunity to clarify on is you know the people speculating that maybe we're going to go try to patent them or that you know it's to prevent people from being able to use our genetics that's absolutely not the case he is truly just like a very science driven person that is what started the breeding well in the you first have to place. check you have to check I mean you know, given that, like, I'm not, I don't know the exact number, but maybe like a third of other agricultural uh, species and products that we grow as humans have had this science applied to it, you know, like, who, why would you not? It's like, doesn't make any sense. So cannabis does not need to just like stay 
you know, we don't need to put it in one lane only. We don't need to put it in one lane only. Yeah, we, we do need to preserve like all of the heritage the lines and yeah, exactly. And this is like literally, you know, some of our genomic research right here. And these are some really unique inbred lines of ours. And so with breeding, like if you cross a unique line with a, this is like most of the, you know, population, a lot of different cannabis genetics that are common. If you cross those two distinct things, you get magic. And that's a real, you know, every breeder knows that that is like a phenomena that happens. And so that's another initiative that we're pursuing right now is highly diverse breeding, but with uh, purebred lines. We only ever use organic. I mean, I, I shouldn't say that because I've used salts before, but like we use organic like 99% of the time. And um, for initial we are, trials, every time we ever breed anything, like what would you say we put into it? I mean, you know, a couple shovelfuls of chicken shit is one step, and then but we do you know, trials. Our local soil. It's like and almost impossible to. If it's beautiful when it comes out from that condition, then we know, you know, whatever anyone else adds, it's going to be extra, extra yeah. beautiful. Yeah, I mean, it's very hard to really produce indoor organic at scale. So I think that's something that people need to remember. Is like yeah. if you're buying. Uh, a lot of weed from a big indoor grow, the chances that it's really organic are kind of low. And I mean, I don't have anything against that. I'll smoke it. But like, you know, I don't personally just want to mix chemicals to grow my weed. I want to actually like have soil. And that's just me yeah, personally. Say, I'm not I judging. Don't, I don't mind if I yeah. if mines are mineral. No problem yeah. Mineral. And, and obviously like people grow our strains however they're gonna grow them and we're not here to tell them what to do or anything but growing organic for me is just like makes sense and it's logical in my mind because we're like a big gardening family too like Hallie was born planting seeds in yeah. greenhouses in Humboldt County wow. and riding around on my back yeah. <laughs> yeah. so we always eat organic and so we grow weed organic too That's another one. I like to smoke weed just because weed's great. Yeah. <laughs> but I really, really like to grow, smoke organic outdoor weed. Yeah. And I don't know, people might say like, oh, indoor is so much better. But personally, I feel like the turpins can be more rich when you have the sun and when you have more nature involved. Cause you know, like there's such a, a food, what would you call it? Like a web of life, I guess, you know, yeah. like. <laughs> the circle of life or whatever but it's like you know all plants since the beginning of time have really grown from like shit and then <laughs> and we why do we have to change and it, that's so like you know to, going away from that I, I don't necessarily think we're ever going to find a better way than the nature way you know some people aren't fortunate as we are to be in Humboldt and to be able to grow right. some of the right. most pristine yeah. cannabis outside in our backyard. <laughs> That's and not worry about the cops. I will so never like, ever. We don't judge. Yeah, we don't. Another, another <laughs> yeah, yeah. So grow it indoor and and yeah. hide, like keep it away from the fucking pigs. You know what I mean? Yeah. And but you know if you can go and do it outside outdoors, try that too. And like you know don't judge good outdoor yeah. weed until you've like had the chance to grow it and it's a it's a privilege to grow it you know i like i like my bud like i like my heirloom tomatoes you know <laughs> straight straight from the ground <laughs> i love like uh i don't know sebastian from fast buds was over here those guys have such a good vibe you know we've always been friends with don and aaron from <laughs> dna and shit, we love all cannabis breeders because i always said like no matter what, if you're out there playing with cannabis and doing crosses, we're probably kindred spirits. You know, we're probably like similar people. So, I mean, you know, I think Atlas Seed Company is doing good work right now. I'm just naming all of our competition. <laughs> Let's do it like serious breeding, you know.
because not a lot of people are necessarily doing too serious of breathing. Because we have, we know we have. It's that. like if you're just crossing random clones together, you don't get anything that's repeatable. And the core of breeding and science is having experiments that come out the same time every time you. We can preserve them. And and they should be like repeatable experiments. Yeah. Like if you, if every time it's like a big pheno hunt, then. No, but we've been glad that our blueberry muffins, we've made them to always smell like blueberry muffins. So, like, if you if you try our blueberry muffin seeds, I promise, I promise, promise that you're going to get a blueberry muffin smell. <laughs>